Hello, we're in Malta and I'm doing a couple of, of pieces of furniture today. Uh, I've, I've done an awful lot of pictures on the website already and other things, uh, but I'm going to move on to furniture. Furniture really is my favourite part of the market. Um, and uh, I will try and get across the essence of this, this item. Um, you know, you, I can describe the item, I can tell you how much it is, I can tell you where it's from, I can tell you what colour it is. I can measure it for you, but there's a bit more to it. I want to try and get the essence across to you. Now, we're going to start by showing you this book, which I like to, to, to use. It's the Guide to Maltese Furniture by Joseph Garley and Audi, and it is considered like the Bible in Malta by the dealers, the auctioneers, the collectors, and I think that's a very reasonable thing. And by good fortune, in this book on page 136, there is not the same one, but there is another one. Now I would say that was painted by the same person. In fact, we have four of these. We have, that, we have actually have that actual one, and we have two very similar to that one, which we'll do as well later on. That's the one I'm doing today. Now, I'm afraid, well, despite what anyone says, the shape is not a Maltese shape. The shape is a 18th century French shape. It's a Rococo shape. And in France, you will see them with, believe it or not, you'll see them made of king wood with warmly mounts. In Italy, you'll see dark ones made of plain dark wood. You will not see them in England. Uh, you will see a bow front cabinet in England, but you will, you will not see a, um, this, this step top. This is, this is a continental thing. So, so they are in the Maltese book. The ones in the book are made in Malta. The shape is a continental shape. I've just noticed this one is. 100% bow front. This is actually serpentine. So I think this one is better. It also has better feet. The feet are higher. I, with my English eye, like highly cabriole feet, my aesthetic coat, my aesthetic judgment says these are slightly squat. So everyone's got their own thing. Everyone has their own opinions. Uh, but I'm very pleased this is that this type of thing is in the book. The uh, description alludes to Venice. In, the, in the, the painted decoration, um, the, the Venetians use lots of painted effects. I think that's, that's correct. You have you have painted effects all over Italy, lots of yellows, uh, brightly coloured pieces of, of furniture, which are very very popular. This is this green. Now the, the green paint uh, is very widely used in Malta. It's a dull green paint, and again, I'm not trying to insult the Maltese. There's no reason I would want to, but. This colour is based on, on um, a, uh, if, you, if you went into a, 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 your, your garage and mix all the paints together, this is the sort of colour you get. It's a, it's, a, it's a sort of basic, easily provided colour and uh, it's not an expensive colour. Now, I think it's a fantastic colour. I love it. It goes beautifully with the multi stone. I'm not trying to knock it, but it is. If you take six pots at random out of the garage and mix it up, many of them will go green. Um, the ones, <laughs> of course, it usually goes brown, but that is a, that is a, a very easy colour to mix up. So we've discussed the shape, we've discussed the colour, we've dis discussed the, the feet. Um, serpentine front, very, very difficult to make. These doors are so thin, you, you just wouldn't believe it. They they're not as thin as cardboard, but they're, no, they're, 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 it was, they're, they're like a thick cardboard. And they're, and they're curved. They're curved one way and curved the other. All they have is a little bracket, a little, a little batten holding them. Um, they're pine. The inside is lined. This would have been whitewashed. And um, I'll show you the insides. That is original. original. This is 18th century, this is 1770, 1780. He said it's earlier. Lovely. It smells fantastic. It smells old. This is, um, this, this, this clip is wrought iron. It's not a hardware shop. It's not a Victorian one out of the factory. No lock. Lock's gone. No key. So, one of the things I've noticed when I bought it is it doesn't have hinges as, as you'd expect. No. It has 
wire hinges. Now in England, uh, if something has wire hinges, uh, I'm talking oak country furniture, it's a really good plus point. The, the wire hinges in England tend to be thicker than this. They tend to be more like wrought iron loops. The, these are wire. They're almost like staples. That one's broken off. But they are the original wire hooks. They haven't been changed. Um, they're not the, 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 the hinges with, with the, the pin. Uh, so it's a, it's a fairly crude, provincial, uh, economical form of hinge. Now the legs, as I said, are, are high cabriole legs. I think that looks lovely. Uh, it's quite a high item. I think it is higher than the one in the book. The apron has a, a missing piece of trim at the front. It would be very easy to make that and colour it in. And it would be very easy to colour in all the, the chips on the paintwork. And there are some dealers who would put a new lock on, fill the cracks, clean it, put, a, put all any wood, missing woodware in, they would use filler on the whole, and then it would give a unifying varnish or oiling. I'm not going to do that. It has this beautiful countryside feel, farmhouse feel, evidently Maltese. I mean, that, is a, that as a painting, if I went to an auction and saw that on a piece of canvas, that would be worth something just as a painting. The top section, painted scrolls, foliate designs. The top here is painted red, I believe. That is a, a, foam, a foam marble. I don't think they're trying to make, make it look like brown wood. I think they were trying to make it look like it, like a marble, and it's brown there, and it's brown there. The whole carcass was sanded, and it was wiped with gesso to fill the grain, to give it a slightly smooth finish. It was then rubbed down, just a piece of sc screwed up linen would be enough, and then it was painted. So pine, gesso, paint. I'm going to show you the back. Planks of wood. You want to see planks of wood. You've got planks of wood. The foot has come off and been stuck back on. It's been limed to make it look more presentable, perhaps in the shop, when it was sold. Not that it would have gone in the shop, I think it actually would have been made for someone. Um, you don't want to see any plywood on these. You don't want to see any profiles of wood, which is metric. If you really get academic on this furniture stuff, you can measure shells. If, if it's metric, not imperial measurements, then you, you've got these, these signs, lots of things you can look for. Are the nails square in, in cross-section? Are they round? These are square, these have been beaten. Certainly the heads are round, I mean, I can't vouch for the nail on the side, but these are old nails, it's old wood, it's old hinges, it's old paintwork. Lovely, lovely thing. I'm afraid they're expensive. Because they are um, very hard to get. They are. This one is in the book. Well, one like it is in the book. And when it comes to many collectors in Malta, they do use this book, and I think that's a wise thing to do. In fact, I went to a collection recently, and I bought actually bought four of these in one day at two different sales here. I bought this one in Bocacara. And I bought two, I bought three in Attar in the same sale. And in the sale, there was a collector, a man and a wife, they were probably 65, smart, nice Maltese couple, and they were they had they had the catalogue, and the catalogue was selling things from selling things that had actually been in in the book, the things that had been photographed. As I say, I'm very glad I bought I bought that one. Um, so they were, they were buying this stuff in the book and they obviously had some money to spend. Maybe they'd inherited some money or they decided to furnish a house. And they were, they were buying this stuff and they were going up against the trade buyers. And they went far beyond the, the estimates. And they 
crucified the trade buyers, which crucified the trade buyers. And they bought this stuff. Of course, if they're buying at an auction against the trade, they're not going to buy, not going to be paying any more than they would if they had bought it from the trade. So, so I was really, I was watching this as an Englishman, just sat there on my own in this room full of Maltese people. I thought it was really lovely, you know. They bought their own culture, their own stuff. Though those two people had bought the right stuff. If you buy something that's in the book, it's gilt-edged. The investment value is just right up there. And if they give us their children or whatever, down the line, you know, what a lovely thing. Um, so they bought, I think they bought six, seven things. And of course, you know, it'd be nice if, if the stuff wasn't as valuable, but it, it is valuable. Um, so they were, they, were, they were showing a fairly rigid academic form of acquisition. They had decided what they wanted, they'd taken advice, they thought about it, they picked the things they wanted, they didn't buy the things they didn't, they didn't buy the things they didn't want, and they bought these things. So I, I really enjoyed that sale, it was a five day sale. You know, it's incredible. And um, I learned quite a lot in that sale actually. So back to this piece of furniture, the market, this is going to look good in Provence, in a farmhouse. This is going to look good in Tuscany in a, in a farmhouse. This is going to look good in a flat in Teeny Point. This is going to look good in a palazzo in Nashar. It's going to look good in London or anywhere else. It's definitely Southern European. It smells like it, it looks like it. Not a Polish thing. You get painted furniture in Poland, you get painted furniture in, in the Eastern European countries. It's not that sort of thing, the rudimentary thing. It's graceful, it's provincial. Really lovely thing. We'll, we'll put it on the website and we'll, we'll price it up. And uh, I, I don't know whether that will stay in Malta or not. We'll go abroad. Uh, my feeling is it will stay in Malta. Uh, thanks very much for having a look. I hope I haven't bored you.